What is up everybody, Main Fly Guys here with a just a really cool thing that I stumbled upon and we are going to make this um, new, I call it Not Your Father's Perch and we are going to make this and we're going to do a whole bunch of fun cool things with it so um, to start off, it's kind of a long video so stay with me, to start off this is a 20 millimeter shank and I have already tied in, this is 80 pound mono. I've just folded it over and tied it on the top. Um, we are going to attach it to the new uh, Predator hook um, from Arex. So it's gonna be sort of a flash tail. So this is some Crelax, I'm gonna tie it in. I want this pattern to be about, um, to be about four, anywhere between four and seven inches long. I don't want it to be too long. You can make it pretty long if you want, depending on the flash and the tail. But for me, I don't want it to be too long because I kind of want it to be a um, juvenile perch. So there, I'm just going to tie in the Crelax right on top, just a little flash tail. And then I am going to come forward pretty much to the very front here. And I have some white, just some white faux bucktail, and I'm going to tie it in bullet style. Get all the short fibers out. I'm going to tie it in bullet style, pretty close to the front. I'm just going to make sure that it's a 360 degree profile. Make sure you got all those fibers all the way around, try to be as even as possible. That's pretty good. And then I'm gonna come in. This is a little tough because you have to pre-tie in those mono things, but just slide your tool right over my fancy Bic pen. Okay, catch that bullet right there. And that's it, that's gonna be your your tail section, pretty simple. Um, just a bullet tie in with some flash. That's it, this pattern is not complicated. Um, the pattern is quite simple, but the things that we are going to do are not. Oopsies. Can't be cutting your, your thread like that whatever. Um, I come in and put a, this is going to be pretty well hidden up here. It's not going to be very visible. And so I put a good amount of super glue or whatever your glue of choice is. All right. So this is the PR 378 from ARX. There's a bunch of things that you can do before starting. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make sort of the gunner jig in the front. It's going to sit like this. where So it's going to jig in the front. I'm going to turn this hook into a jig hook. I have done prior slid tungsten beads right here. So that this falls sort of forward, kind of like this kind of falls in this direction rather than a straight jig like that um, but we are going to turn this one into a straight jig like so so that it is literally going to fall right on its nose and then we will be able to jig it up here um, okay so before we tie in that hook piece we're going to come in And we are going to tie our tail in right on so. This is why you need to use 80 pound mono because you want this to be stiff. You don't want this to move all that much. Um, 
And so I use 80 pounds stiff mono. Really seems to do the job. You don't need to worry, there's no hook here. Um, there's no hook, so you don't really need to worry about it sliding off because fish won't be hooked by this portion. Um, they'll be, they'll bite like this and then they'll get hooked back here. So this won't be, and I'm not worried too much about it sliding off. So I don't even really super glue it because I've never had an issue with it sliding off because there's no hook. If there's a hook there, then yeah, then that's something that you need to worry about. Um, okay, so now I have this piece, and this is quite a unique piece, you'll see. It comes from a standout bass and walleye hook. You see that? It's actually a hook by itself. Um, but I have cut the hook off, and I am going to place it just like so, right on top, and turn this into a jig hook. Now, you might be thinking, isn't this going to come off? And let me tell you, perfect, it does not. So I have a special way to tie it in. And I will show you that. I just lock it in with some thread, just some regular thread. Um, whatever, I guess it doesn't matter. But I use mono to tie it in because when you super glue mono, it like, it fuses, um, it fuses, it sort of liquid fuses, the super glue liquid fuses it. Um, so I use mono and I really make sure that it's straight. You really have to make sure that it's straight because that's really important. And I also do sort of wraps around the eye up underneath it. That just adds some extra mono to get caught and glued that will secure it to the eye. So this is twisting on me just a smidge. There we go. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a ton of wraps. Um, and every so often I'm gonna come in with my super glue and I'm gonna super glue it. And what that's gonna do, how's that looking? Pretty good. What that's gonna do is just fuse all this mono to that hook, to the shank, to the other hook. and it holds really well. Um, I picked up a 25 pound weight with it. So I tested it with a 25 pound weight and it picked up the 25 pound weight without coming off. So I felt pretty good. If it can pick up a 25, if it can pick up a 25 pound weight, I felt pretty confident that it won't come out um, when you're when you have a fish hooked on, I felt pretty good. I have all my mono wraps. I'm gonna put one final layer of super glue on it. I would say you can't put too much super glue. There's no like putting too much. Okay, so I've just gone through with just my regular thread here um, and locked it in. Um, this is Danville 210 by the way, which is like the best. So here we go. Now we're gonna take some yellow bucktail. I don't want it to flare too much. I also have a decent amount. Um, and I want it to go to about the end of the hook, right about to the end of the hook. If it doesn't go that far, then it will kind of get lost in the next couple steps. And I'm just gonna tie it in regularly, push it down. I want it to basically meet right at the bottom. That's pretty decent. There we go. 
and I don't I took it from sort of the upper portion of the tail because I don't want it to spray splay out too much I want it to be um, just kind of adds add a little bit to the body and then I'm gonna come in just trim these tips cover up any loose loose ends if you're really worried about these fibers getting pulled out which I'm not but if you are you can super glue them in and they'll be nice and tight the next is going to come in with some orange bucktail I like to give you know an eye length this is a six odd hook so the eye is pretty big but uh, maybe two eye lengths in between my um, orange and yellow and again you want it to be just about the same length just about a hair shorter would be okay but you definitely don't want it to be longer because then all the yellow will get lost and that wrapped really well when you get good bucktail it's just like the coolest thing ever so and then I'm gonna do the same thing come through cut the tips all right so we have a little bit left you should have you know about a fingers width left and we're gonna do two tie-ins that are gonna make this fly really bulky and that's really gonna be the the heart um, of this fly right now if you're trying to add more flash now would be a good time to work in some flash I'm not I don't really care for the flashy fly right now this is pseudo marabou super long super stringy really great and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have you see I have you know a decent chunk here this is gonna go all the way to the end of the fly it should be right the very very tip of it should be right at the end of your flash on the top and that should leave you a much shorter end you know probably 60 40 right about and I'm gonna tie it in on top do one wrap on top and I'm gonna use my fingers and sort of space it out on top you don't want it to go I don't want it to be 360 around but I do want it to have sort of a wider base then you're gonna take the short end I like to split it I'm gonna move forward just a touch before just touch then I'm going to take it split it really take your time here because if you get any fibers caught on your jig then it kind of ruins it and I'm going to take those fibers pull them all the way straight down and back and trap them underneath so that they are on the bottom I'll flip it over just check make sure nothing's too crazy if you do get any fibers caught here, don't worry. It's not the end of the world. That looks pretty good. Okay, so you have a fiber, just one fiber caught there. I can just trim it. This stuff can get a little fuzzy on you, so I'll just take a lighter and just fizzle it down a little bit, make it clean it up a little bit. Okay, so there we go. If this is too long, like this might be a little too long for me, I'll just cut it. There we go. I want this to be right about at the halfway mark. You know what I mean? I want this one to be significantly longer. And that's pretty good. You have the option now. This stuff, you really need to comb it out. You have the option to comb it out right now, which I certainly would recommend. It's much easier to comb it out rather than the two together, it's much easier to comb out just one at a time. Comb it out, and there you have this nice, you see that you're starting to make your, your fish profile. This fly is super bulky, like crazy bulky. Okay, so now I take some ripple ice fibers. This is like an olive -y color. And I make some cheeks. Um, I make some cheeks on either side, on both sides, I should say, not either side. 
but both sides. The cheeks definitely add a good sort of cool sort of cool look to it. Um, you can use whatever color you want. Oranges sort of looks good on this. A red is never a bad color. Um, but the cheeks are a must. Lay it on there. I sort of do a 50-50. See that it just adds a little contour, a little, a little contrast. All right, how's that look? And if you got any crazy fibers, I just kind of give them a, give them a trim, trim the excess, as my, my boy Davy McFeel would say. All right, how's that looking? Pretty good. That's looking great. Be careful, don't, uh, don't stab yourself with the hook because it is. If you've ever worked with A-Rex hooks before, you know then. Then you know. They're the sharpest in the game. All right, so then we're gonna come in with one more. I like to sort of grab an end, and then grab an end and pull to see if there's any sort of loose fibers hanging out there. This looks pretty good. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go boom right to the end. Trap this in. You should be right, I mean right at the eye of the regular hook. Trap that in. That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna do the space. Remember, split it. So I have it split on both sides. We will move forward with it and then pull it back under. There we go. I want to finish right behind the eye. So you should, I, there you'll make this little bulb, this little bulbous of, of green here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you'll make this little bulb of green. It's just, it's barely there, but, um, but it is there. All right, then we'll work back just a little bit. Again, if you have any fibers trapped, give them a cut because we're going to need to get in this little hole here. All right, that looks good. I got some fuzzies going on, so I just give it a quick buzz, quick flame. Takes care of everything. Okay, this bulbous part, you're like, well, there's a large gap here. I'm gonna put an eyeball there, and we're gonna make an eye for the for this um, pattern. We're gonna put a, a head here, a little eye head, so that will clear anything up there. Before I do that, though, I'm going to um, lock this up because I'm all done here. Excuse me. Lock this up. Okay. Now again, I'm gonna come through and comb just because everything I want it to be, you know, kind of connected. And it gets rid of all those loose fibers. And just sort of blends everything really nicely. Just blends it really nicely. Ow. Ow. That hurt. Okay. So how are we looking here? Oh, look at that. It's just a great blend of... It's really, really thick. Really, really bulky. Just a good blend, you know? Of perchy colors. Um... I come through, before I do any eye work, I come through and I put some perch lines on it. I'll speed this up. All 
All right. How fishy are we looking now? Ooh. Ooh. We are looking. <laughs> I mean, that, that itself, I mean, you don't need this jig part. This is just me going crazy. You don't actually need that jig part. This in itself is just a killer. Super thick. Um, you definitely need to fish it on some weighted lines or add those beads into right here. You can also add a glass um, rattle down here. I mean, but you definitely need some weight because this stuff is so bulky and kind of light that it's hard to get down. So you need some added weight. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and we're going to tie in on this very tip a jig. And I want to show you how to construct that jig. I'm going to use this 80 pound mono first and I'm going to just tie a regular overhand knot and I want to pull it. So I'm just making a knot just like, yeah, just a little knot there. And I use pliers to pull it as tight as I can. Because you want that knot to be pretty small. <clears throat> there we go. And then I'm going to trim the bottom. I'm going to trim the bottom of it. If you've, if you've never seen um, Gunner do this, I suggest you go watch his YouTube because he is, I believe, the creator of this uh, this technique. I don't know that for sure, but I'm, I'm almost positive that he is. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two, I think these are five 30 second tungsten beads on it. They're pretty heavy for beads. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this, just like this, on the end. So this causes the dip. This causes the action. So I think right about there. I want it to be about the same bottom. I want it to be even with the bottom of my hook here. And so what I'm going to do is trim this down a little bit to make it more workable. And I'm just going to tie it in. So I want it to be right about there. I'm just going to tie it in right like so. Don't worry about the direction that it's facing just yet or anything. But I'm going to tie it in. And I'm going to really make sure that I've tied it in good. I've switched back to the mono um, just because I kind of want this to be clear. I'm going to tie it in real good. And I'm going to go around it, kind of like dumbbell eyes. Let's give it some extra security. All right, so I've given it a little extra security and I got it pretty, uh, pretty secure up there. I'm gonna put some super glue on it for sure, just to make sure that it is really, this is kind of why I go back to the mono. Um, oh boy because it will fuse, basically. It will fuse. So, what I want is I want it to hang down directly like so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with a lighter and I am just going to, um, I'm just gonna touch the bend with the lighter. I'm just gonna touch it. That touch will allow you to form your uh, mono. And there it is, perfectly down, a nice jig. It will jig down. This will really pull the front down. Um, if you want it even more, you can get it even more, but whatever. That's down. That's never gonna move. Perfect, just like that. So now, I like it. 
I don't want it to to move. That's not going to move. That's going to stay like that um, for as long as you really want. So I'm going to come in with some super glue, just a little bit. Again, you really it's mono, so I mean, you really don't want this part sailing on you. So I I am good with excess super glue. And so that is almost done. We're just gonna put eyes on it and build a little head and look at that. Look at that, that is something different. I guarantee you no fish has seen anything like this. That's, that's a guarantee. Um, but look at that, that's the profile it takes and I mean that's a perch as far as I'm concerned. So I'm gonna let this dry and then uh, I'll be right back to put some eyes on and we'll take a peek at it. All right, so for the eyes, what I like to do is just put a little drop of super glue, just to help me sort of orientate the eyes. Just to help them stick there. You see I'm using pretty small eyes for this one. You can use big ones if you want. Um, the other option, I guess I'll just show you the other, uh, the other option to get it to stay is take a little UV, Drop a little UV down. Put your eye kind of where you want it. Make sure that it's straight and where you want it. And how's that looking? Pretty good. And then just zap it real quick. That will just help, you know, it will help you as you build that head. I like to build the little head right pretty much all the way, you know, in there. Um, really kind of fill it up. You can use a flex or a thick or whatever you want. My my, uh, my personal favorite for building these heads is Raid. They're like, I mean, they're the best. And I need some more. Raid, if you're listening, please, I could use some more. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see here. I will actually use my fingers to work it into these fibers to try to make it see how it connects there it looks or I mean it looks like it connects um, that sort of connection I'll use and you just just go a little bit at a time you don't need to do a lot of the time but I will use my fingers to work it into the collar here um, it just kind of makes it makes it seamless from this little eye here. You can use a bigger eye if you want, but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This requires a little work down in here. That looks pretty dang good. And so that is not your father's perch with a jig front, the gunner jig here, which is a cool concept. Um, and uh, the new A-Rex uh, PR-378. And so basically a fish will come and get it, and then boom, get drilled right there. I mean, this, this you could do so many different things. My favorite thing to do is add these beads right here um, so that it basically falls like this, you know. And uh, again, just a great pattern and super bulky just super super bulky sick pattern just a sick pattern um so i hope you like it uh we just had speaking of pike and musky we just had a musky podcast come out and our podcast is called in the film uh by main fly guys it's a fly fishing podcast and we just talked about musky and we have one coming up talking about pike and this 
this is a killer um, for either of those fish. So I hope you like this, a little different, something challenging, you know, just something different and uh, I don't know, something cool, you know, better than the, just the usual perch bait fish. So boom, there's our pattern. Uh, hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know. But um, if that's all, then we'll catch you next time.